Wendy Priest, and I'm here to talk to you about de-stressing nutrition. Um, we'll get started. I'm, um, I'm an exercise physiologist by trade. Um, I teach all kinds of things under the umbrella of um, applied physiology. So I, I incorporate nutrition, and all of my research has to do with nutrition, actually. Um, so we'll go into talking about that. Um, before we get into nutrition, I kind of want to describe what the stress response is. So that once we know how stress affects our body, we know how we can use our nutrition to sort of stave off the negative effects of stress. Um, we can't eliminate stress with nutrition. I don't want you guys to think that that's what I'm saying. I just want to talk about how we can support our bodies because stress isn't always bad. So we're going to talk about what stress is. Um, stress is really that flight or, uh, fight or flight response. It's the process of physiological stress. Um, it starts the moment you realize that there's a stressor there. So the minute you see the lion, your body know, is on high alert. It knows that there's something scary there that can hurt you that it has to get away from. And basically what happens is you see it, and a message goes into your brain, and all kinds of things all over your body will start to happen. So you're going to have hormonal responses, you're going to have um, just muscular responses, and we're going to talk about that. So when you see that that pressure is, the stressor is present, uh, signals are sent to your brain, and your hypothalamus basically starts something called your autonomic nervous system. So there, we'll just basically talk about two systems. You have sympathetic and parasympathetic. And your sympathetic nervous system is that fight or flight response. It's the guy that gets you excited and away from danger. And your parasympathetic system is the one that calms you down and helps you fall asleep at night, if that gives you an idea. So we're going to talk about stress in your body. So once your brain sees it, it sends all these effects out into your body. So in your nervous system might cause your heart to beat faster, your blood pressure might rise um, because you, you have to fight off this threat. Your muscles can tense. Um, you know, you've heard stories perhaps about people who had superhuman strength when, um, when maybe they had to lift a car off of somebody else. Um, and that's enhanced because of your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your sympathetic nervous system, sorry. Um, so your muscles tense and you can get tricked, like if you have persistent stress, you can get tension, tension headaches and stuff like that. Um, your respiratory system, your breathing quickens. Your cardiovascular system, your heart rate increases. Your endocrine system. So this is really where you have um, the release of hormones like cortisol um, that basically are a stress hormone that help your body to fight off this perceived threat. Your GI system, your gastrointestinal system, you might have all kinds of weird stuff happening there. Your eating habits can change. You can feel butterflies in your stomach. Um, a lot of times what we see here is with persistent stress in situations where you maybe don't eat for a while because you're either working away to get something accomplished or um, you're just so nervous that you can't eat is we wind up having something that we call hedonic eating. So that's like, comes from the word hedonism, where you just enjoy whatever you're eating so much, or you think about whatever really unhealthy things are gonna make you feel full after you starve yourself all day. Um, and then we start to see overeating too, associated with stress. So what also happens is you are, you, you stop secreting things that help you digest. Um, when you're under a lot of stress uh, because your body is really trying to focus all of its energy on overcoming this stressor and so all these other things are going to go by the wayside and this is really great if you have acute stress so if you have a lion in the room and you need to get away from it that is a great response to have you are going to get away from that lion you need everything that you can't you don't need to be using shut down and all of your getaway things are cranked up. So acute stress is short-term stress. It's something that happens right now. 
and it's helpful because sometimes you have a deadline that you just have to meet and this kind of stress is good for you to get over that hump. Um, if you are in like an athlete in competitions or if you have a child who's an athlete in competitions, you can harness this acute stress and it can be really, really good for you because you can use all of that energy that you get to meet your goals or overcome that obstacle. Um, so it helps you to achieve immediate goals. That's what acute stress means. Chronic stress is just stress that lasts for a long time. It has a wearing effect on people. Um, it can really cause serious health problems if you don't address it. So it can lead to memory loss, facial recognition, uh, diabetes, uh, uh, strange eating patterns, all kinds of things like that. So some chronic stress examples are, and I don't, I'm sure I don't need to give these to you, but I thought I would. Things like interpersonal relationships, your lack of job security, unclear expectations, poor communication, sometimes it's just talking about politics, um, not enough autonomy, so if you don't have enough control over what it is you're supposed to be doing, urgent deadlines, just having too much work, long hours. A lot of times people don't realize how much stress they're under because the stress is really just the amount of things they have to do. And to tell someone that, well now you have to go sit and meditate and still do all those things doesn't really get rid of the stress or help anyone. A meditation is great, but it doesn't necessarily get rid of the tack that you're stepping on, right? So if you're, if you're hurt because you're stepping on a tack, you gotta take out that tack. So sometimes you just have to reduce the amount of things that you're doing before everything else will work. Um, uncomfortable physical conditions, relationship conflicts, uh, if people around you just making careless mistakes, there's a lot of stress that you cannot control that we have to just deal with sometimes. So here's what healthy coping looks like. Like I said, eliminate that tack. Try to eliminate stress triggers. Um, practice clear and honest communication. And ladies, I know this can be really hard for us because sometimes we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Um, so we want to try to find the most diplomatic way to be very, very honest and clear. Get seven to nine hours of sleep every night. So this is a really, this is a good one because getting that sleep helps you to, uh, your body to secrete growth hormone. And growth hormone uh, is what repairs your muscles. It's what keeps that muscle mass on you. And when growth hormone is out, cortisol goes away. So cortisol is that stress hormone, which has a deleterious effect on your muscle mass. Um, and it's not that we're bodybuilders or anything, but as we age, by the time we're 26, our bodies, if we're not doing uh, weight training or any kind of training, our bodies are losing muscle. When we lose muscle, we lose coordination, um, and we lose a lot of, of, of other parts of our health. So get, just getting sleep is going to reduce stress and keep us healthier. Um, other things that you want to make sure that you're doing are drinking eight to 10 glasses of water, um, unsweetened and uncaffeinated things per day. Practice deep breathing, exercise at least 30 minutes a day, meditate, practice mindfulness, um, practice self-care and take breaks. That self-care is gonna look like all this other stuff. It's gonna look like sleeping. It's gonna look like drinking water. It's gonna look like getting exercise. Super boring, but that's self-care. Um, so how can we use nutrition to help reduce the negative impacts of stress? Well, with nutrition, we can reduce inflammation, which is a big part of stress. We can ramp up our parasympathetic nervous system. So remember, I, in the beginning, I had all those big slides with big words. Parasympathetic nervous system is what helps calm you down and help you reduce your heart rate, help you fall asleep. Sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight response. So we can ramp that stuff up and calm ourselves down. 
Um, we can reduce and prevent metabolic diseases like diabetes and hypertension, prevent cancer, we can protect our brains. So remember we talked about the effects of stress on our brain? Well, with nutrition, we can really, especially things like antioxidants and healthy fats, we can really protect our brain. Increase dopamine, believe it or not, so that's our feel-good hormone. We can prevent stress overeating and undereating, and a lot of the nutrition I'm going to talk about includes nutrition behaviors, not just what you eat, but your behavior about eating. Um, it can help with sleep. We'll talk about supporting healthy digestion, supporting healthy respiratory systems, and immune function. Because stress has a deleterious, has a bad effect on our immune systems. So our best bet against stress um, is a healthy diet after we remove that tack. So we can really do a lot of good things. So we want to talk about making a quarter of our plate fruits and vegetables, or, or like a quarter of your plate vegetables, a quarter of your plate fruits, or just half your plate fruits and vegetables. How about that? Quarter of your plate whole grains, a quarter of your plate a lean protein. If you're into dairy, have at it. If not, don't worry about it. And a lot of times your dairy can look like your protein. So for instance, like for myself this morning, I had an apple, I had a Greek yogurt, and um, some of that Dave's Killer Bread, which is really delicious. It's like a sprouted bread. You can just get it at Walmart if you want. They'll deliver it right to your house. Um, Amazon will send it to your house. I, I think um, you can get it up in the North Towns, too. Um, so I didn't have a vegetable, but I did a pretty good job. And then at like a snack time, I had some carrots and hummus. So this is a pretty good way, a, a guide for us, I think. Um, and we'll talk more specifically about some of the foods that help more than others. So, leafy greens. Um, we know that they result in increased dopamine, which makes you feel good. Um, we know that it also helps to reduce cortisol. So it increases the good stuff, decreases the bad stuff. Um, a 2012 study in the Journal of Affective Disorders showed that 2,800, 2,800. So a lot of times when we, I talk about studies all the time because that's my background. Um, I want to briefly just talk about how to know when a study is worthwhile, worth looking into, and maybe it's something that you just see in the news. Uh, for instance, when we, uh, last year I want to say, we found out in the Wall Street Journal that eggs were bad for us, but two years before that they were good for us, and then two years before that they were bad for us. So when we look at journalism about nutrition and about exercise, um, a lot of times that journalist is just seeing a new study that came out and talking about it. And so studies that are very meaningful have a certain size. Maybe you, if you only look at eight people, that doesn't tell you as much as a study that looks at 2,800 people. And it certainly doesn't tell you as much as a study that's been repeated time and time again, and we see the same kinds of results. And we see those things when we look at reviews of studies. So this is kind of a big deal. This study was a good one. Um, 2,800 middle-aged people, uh, middle-aged to elderly people, found that those who consume the most folate through things like leafy greens had the lowest risk of depression than those who took in the least amount of folate. So th this was a green study. So um, a, two th a 2013 study showed that college students, so this is a good one because they're under a lot of stress and they have, I can personally attest to this, like the weirdest nutrition, like they just do the weirdest things. Um, they could not eat for a whole day and then eat, like just pig out on cold pizza the next day. Um, they found that college students tended to feel calmer and happier and more energetic on the days that they ate more fruits and vegetables. So this was like a self-report study, which a lot of times um, aren't great, but the controls in that study were very good. So they had they actually had, gave the kids fruits and vegetables to, that they had to eat. And they reported that they felt calmer and more energetic on those days. There's a lot more research about folate and about leafy greens, um, but I'm not going to bore you with all of those details. 
Um, so turkey breast, but really when I'm talking about turkey breast, I'm talking about lean protein. So if you're not a turkey person or you're not a meat person, that's okay. Um, what we're going to get out of some of these foods, so other foods that are high in tryptophan um, and lean protein are things like nuts, seeds, tofu, if you like tofu, it's actually a really wonderful ingredient that you can make taste like anything and it doesn't ever get dry. So I put it in tacos a lot because a lot of times chicken tacos get too dry. So, um, and my kids don't know the difference. Fish, lentils, oats, beans, and eggs are all really good sources of tryptophan. Um, it helps to produce serotonin, the chemical that regulates hunger, and a feeling of happiness. So a lot of times if you go on like an antidepressant, it actually helps to regulate serotonin. So this is a way to sort of get that naturally. Um, a study showed that men and women, this was a really funny study, um, who were deemed to be pretty argumentative. So uh, psychologists have these tests that you can take. Um, and if you're argumentative, you'll score a certain way. Um, it's a personality test. So they took a tryptophan uh, supplement. And so they found that people who took the supplement for about two weeks um, were more agreeable at, uh, based on what their, how their study partners reported them than when they didn't take it. So this was a double-blind crossover study, which means that they didn't take it for two weeks, and maybe they took a placebo. They took it for two weeks, and they looked at both conditions. So that was pretty neat. Um, and there's a lot of studies where we just we just know that we want to fall asleep after Thanksgiving dinner, and um, it's healthy for us in many other ways. So we'll talk about whole grains next. Um, you want to think about things like oatmeal, and you know, I before I went to nutrition school, I didn't know that oats and wheat were two different plants and two different things. So Oats and oatmeal are 100% whole grain, and you can just microwave it for a minute, and it's a whole grain, it's perfectly healthy, it's got all that tryptophan, it helps you with serotonin and all that other stuff. Um, it helps you uh, fall asleep at night, actually. Um, if you want to get things that are like pre-made, like a bread, it went, you want to make sure it says 100% whole grain. Ezekiel's a great one. That Dave's Killer Bread is a great one. Um, you can get all kinds of all these now. A lot of times they'll say sprouted. And what sprouted means is that they soaked it so that the seed actually started to use some of the sugars that were in there to uh, begin to sprout. And so it's got more fiber and less sugar than other kinds of bread. So that's kind of cool too. Um, rices like wild rice, brown rice, quinoa, there's farro, popcorn is a whole grain. Um, if you air pop your own popcorn, you throw some Parmesan on it, it's delicious. Uh, it's a great way to get a whole grain. According to MIT research, carbohydrates can help the brain make serotonin. Um, so that's great. Also, we just need a steady stream of blood sugar um, to sort of help our brain achieve things throughout the day. So we get really tired um, without it. You can, like right now, I can tell I'm getting towards midday. I get like this every day and I start saying the wrong words. But a steady stream of a healthy uh, grain or a healthy stream of uh, glucose is much, much better than a high pop of a simple sugar. So that just gets across your gut lining real fast. You maybe get a quick burst of energy and then it tanks and you get hungry and tired. With the whole grain, you have a steady stream of glucose coming out throughout the course of the day. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is yogurt and dairy. So gut bacteria, we learn more and more about it, gosh, every week. There are studies coming out constantly, and it's really nothing short of fascinating. Um, there are more bacterial cells in your intestines than your body has its own cells. About 10 pounds of what's hanging out in your gut is foreign bacteria that's helping us in more ways than we know about. So we know that gut bacteria can be linked to stress. Um, research shows that the brain signals to the gut, which is why stress can inflame GI symptoms um, and communication can flow the other way too. Meaning that if you have really good gut health, it can actually increase our dopamine. There's a lot of research on that that's pretty new. 
Um, in 2013, a study of 36 healthy women, so this is a small study that we look for an effect in, and then we can do bigger studies from there. And so this was an old study, but it was one of the originals that showed uh, what yogurt probiotics do. Um, so they reduced brain activity um, in areas that deal with emotion, including stress. So um, people who ate more yogurt wound up having less stress response as um, that we could actually witness in their brains when they experienced stressful situations than people who didn't. It also has a lot of B vitamins and D vitamins that help to eliminate stress or, or eliminate the effects of stress and help you fall asleep at night. So those are all great. We'll talk about fatty fish and omega-3s. So omega-3 fatty acids that you find in fish, like um, cold water fish or fatty fish, are totally different from omega-3s that you get from plants. So these ones are a little bit better for your brain. The only other place I think that you can find them is in uh, like seaweed products like Corella and Spirulina. Um, otherwise, you're looking at like an ALA kind of, of uh, omega-3, which is still good for you. But these ones have DHA, which is great for your brain. Um, they have anti-inflammatory properties that help to counteract the negative effects of stress hormones. Um, an NIH study in Oregon showed that um, medical students who took omega-3 supplements had a 20% reduction in anxiety compared with a group that was only given placebos. And let's just give you an idea of how much good stuff is in a serving of salmon. So a three ounce serving, which is probably about half of the amount that, of, of salmon that I eat in a sitting, um, a three ounce serving of cooked wild salmon has more, it's more like 3,000 milligrams of omega-3s. Um, if you take, I don't know, like let's think about something that somebody would be, get very easily, like a Big Mac. A Big Mac will have none, no omega-3s. If you go, then you try to make your own burger, you're gonna look at less than 300 if it's a grass-fed burger. So this is so much omega-3, it's so good for you. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about are blueberries. So um, the antioxidants and phytonutrients that we find in berries, anything that's blue or purple is an anthocyanin. So when we talk about phytonutrients, we talk about things like Flavonoids. You're going to hear all these sciencey words, and basically that makes the food the color that it is. And that chemical is like a few sort of benzene rings attached by three carbons, and that really doesn't tell you much except for that the form of a chemical tells you a lot about what its function is. So what they do is they um, grab on to reactive oxygen species, which are just like inflammation or um, free radicals, and they calm them down, and they help get them out of your body. So when your body is under a lot of stress, and you have inflammation, and you have, or maybe there's pollution in your body has, the, the bearing the physical stress of that, these things go in, and they grab onto it, calm it down, and get it the heck out of your body. So Physiologically, that is what it does. But they do so much, so much more. We know that berries are associated with reductions in cardiovascular disease, reductions in stomach ulcers. Um, they modify our intracellular signaling that deals with our immunity. So it tells our like T, our natural killer cells to go get rid of those bad guys. So that also helps with inflammation, um, and it helps with just. Being like in a time like now, it's great to have extra immunity, so it's great for that. Um, we know that it helps to repair brains after strokes. Um, it reduces um, enzymes that want to increase inflammation, which are things that you experience during stressful situations. Um, we talked about natural killer cells, um, we talked about anthocyanins, and Reactive oxygen species. Okay, great. So we're done with blueberries. I get so excited talking about 
the chemistry behind these things, so I, I hope it's not boring for you. But we'll talk about nuts and seeds next. So when you have, we talked about this in one of my other presentations, when you have like an ongoing loop of negative thoughts, like maybe if you're thinking about something annoying that happened at work today, or maybe your sister-in-law is bothering you and you just can't stop thinking about it, something that's nice to do is to distract yourself with your hands. So just by like cracking open some walnut shells and picking out the nuts and eating them, not only do you get all of the wonderful health benefits of those nuts, but you stop that ruminating. You sort of calm it down in your mind. Um, so that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, we'll talk about specific nuts in a minute, but we know that they may reduce acute stress um, by lowering your blood pressure and your heart rate. Um, they have really key phytonutrients that I'm gonna talk about in a minute that provide antioxidant support. Um, so things like walnuts and pumpkin seeds, we have a lot of omega-3s as well, but those are plant omega-3s that aren't quite as good for your brain as the, as the salmon was. Again, um, fatty fish, if you're a vegan and you're not into that or you just don't like salmon and you want to try something else, you can buy something called spirulina, which is just a blue-green algae which does have some um, DHA in it, or corella is another one. And it just comes as a powder and you just dump it in your smoothie and you don't even taste it. But it does make everything green. So back to omega-3s from walnuts and from nuts, we know that that is good for our heart health, it's good for reducing inflammation. Um, we'll take a look at pistachios. Um, we know that they reduce vascular stress and cholesterol. Cashews actually reduce feelings of stress. In some studies, we see that you know people who snack on cashews, they'll, you know, versus people who snack on things like a caramel or a banana, they feel better um, at the end of their discussion. Um, it's got a lot of magnesium in it, which we know helps our nervous system. It's got a lot of B6, which helps with releasing serotonin, so cashews are great. Um, pumpkin seeds also have a lot of magnesium. Sunflower seeds are also known to help with serotonin and melatonin release, um, which help you sleep at night. A lot of magnesium as well. Um, so try some in your salad if you're not into just eating nuts. Just, just put them in places where maybe you get a little bit of crunch and you don't notice them. Um, the next we'll talk about avocado. It's another really healthy fat. Um, super trendy right now. In 2014, a study in Loma Linda, which, by the way, Loma Linda, California, has one of the world's longest living populations. Um, they have more centenarians there than just about anywhere else in the world, meaning people who live to be about 100. So a lot of healthy people there. Um, that university researchers um, had a half an avocado added to their lunches which reduced their desire to eat by more than 40% within the three hours following that midday meal. So about half an avocado, if it's a really big avocado, it's about 144 calories, like a medium-sized avocado, it's like 125 calories. So for reference, <clears throat> an avocado um, being about 125 calories is about the same as a tablespoon of butter. So we know that millennials love like putting avocado on their toast. And if you were to put you know, a whole tablespoon of butter on two pieces of toast, it's the same amount of calories with zero antioxidants and zero fiber. Half of an avocado has 10 grams of fiber. So that's going to help you feel really full too, whereas butter won't necessarily. So I'm kind of in the avocado group. I think they're really smart for doing that. It's also loaded with potassium, which helps keep your blood pressure in check. Um, they're great with leafy greens, um, they're loaded with phytochemicals, which are just our antioxidants, remember, um, and things that we call carotenoids, and that's just what makes it the color that it is. Actually, carotenoids, we a lot of times look yellow and orangey. Um, those decrease inflammation and oxidation, and we know that that's really good too. So this is kind of a lot more heart healthy than even like that, I mean, I don't know anyone who would put a tablespoon of olive oil on their bread, but this is healthier than butter for sure. 
Um, the next thing we'll talk about is tea. So there are so many things you can do with teas. Um, I have so many things to talk about here. When I give this presentation live, I usually bring a whole bunch of boxes of tea with me so that you can see what's out there and, and try things. We just start with the, like, the most basic kinds of tea, like green tea and black tea. They actually come from the same plant. Black tea's just been roasted. But they have tons of phytochemicals that we know reduce stress responses and induce relaxation. Green tea has catechins in them, which are just basically broken down. They're a chemical that helps to pull fat into your mitochondria, which is just the place in your cell where you burn things for energy. So it, it, it like opens the door and helps fat to get burned for energy in your cells, um, which is great, right? It helps your metabolism. Um, it reduces inflammation. And um, it may give you, like there's a lot of B vitamins, a lot of good stuff in there. It just may make you feel like you have more energy, but not stress you out the same way that coffee can. So like, let's remember, coffee's a great beverage, but if you have it too late in the afternoon, um, you're going to have, it actually looks like sugar, and it starts your ability to burn sugar, which is kind of nice, but it also kind of looks like something that makes your heart rate go up. So we know that caffeine can make our heart rate go up, and it in induces that sort of sympathetic nervous system, that sympathetic nervous system response that we don't want. It can increase anxiety and things like that. So if you're dealing with it and you're dealing with stress, maybe we want to try some things that don't have as much caffeine, but we get something else, these good phytochemicals from. So ashwagandha, kava, tulsi, th these things also have, they're called adaptogens, and we have witnessed um, in laboratories their ability to sort of induce that parasympathetic response or that calming response. So I'll talk about a few. One is chamomile, which um, I think everybody kind of knows of is like the sleepy time tea. We know that it helps to reduce like hay fever, like allergy things, insomnia, muscle spasms. So if you have like uh, muscle tension that you think might be related to stress, chamomile can actually help with that. You know, it relaxes our nerves. <clears throat> Ashwagandha is a big one. It's like it's basically like an Indian ginseng. It's from a root. Um, we know that there's been a lot of research showing that it can improve concentration. My favorite tea that's got ashwagandha in it is from Yogi Tea, and it's called Sweet Tangerine. Look it up. It's delicious. You don't need to add any sweetener to it. Um, it tastes so good. It's so refreshing. It has a little bit of caffeine in it. And it just sort of helps you power through the day. Um, a 60-day study showed that 69% of people who introduced ashwagandha into their diets um, redu reduced anxiety and insomnia. Um, an eight-week study, this was out of India, showed an 88% reduction in anxiety, and I believe that was in medical students. Um, so there's a brain boost effect a memory improvement that we see with ashwagandha, uh, reduced blood sugar and cortisol, and anxiety and depression. So all of those things, just from drinking a tea that already tastes good, so you might as well go ahead and try that one. Kava's in there, and so kava actually has a really strong, profound effect on your parasympathetic nervous system. Really good to take sort of at night and not in a time of day where you want to be drowsy. Um, it can be pretty powerful. Um, Tulsi is called, uh, another word for it is like holy basil, and that's another Indian um, tea plant. Uh, it tastes pretty good, you don't notice it, and there's a whole brand, they have their own brand, uh, or a brand that's called Tulsi, that you can find at like Wegmans, um, if you want to try that. All different flavors. So after teas, oh, we get to chocolate. So chocolate is full of flavonoids, and we talked about flavonoids. Those are usually the things that give um, th give a plant its color, or part of a plant its color. Um, so with chocolate, you want to look for things that are like 70% cacao, and that's where you're going to get the most flavonoids. But it reduces blood vessel, uh, relaxes blood vessels, lower blood pressure, improved circulation. Um, research shows that dark chocolate may lower levels of stress hormones, increase dopamine, things like that. 
Um, it contains sugar, which is a carbohydrate, which remember we talked about um, that release of glucose into your bloodstream? Your brain likes that, um, which can improve serotonin. Um, you don't want to go eat the whole bar. Um, some people don't even really like dark chocolate, so what you might want to do is get dark chocolate covered almonds or, or dark chocolate powdered almonds, things like that. Um, it's okay to have a little bit, but keep your portions in check. Um, so things that you want to avoid if you're stressed. So I'll just go through and give this example. I was um, buying my car, I don't know, the last time I bought a car, I'm at the dealership, and it's a really busy dealership, and I could just tell that the guy who was doing my transaction at the end, he was, he must have sold four cars that day or something, and he was just running everywhere, his armpits were all sweaty, and you know, he pounded a Red Bull, put it down, he had to go get some other manager, and then by the end, when I'm, he, when I'm signing everything, he's drinking another Red Bull. And all I'm thinking is that he's tired, he's stressed, he's running from one place to another. I don't know when he's last eaten. He hasn't had any water, but he chugged two Red Bulls to get through this. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that when we're really busy, we try to get this done and then get to the next thing and get that done and get to the next thing. And we don't take care of our bodies by making sure that it has what it needs. So we want to make sure that we're not just doing things out of convenience so we can get to the next thing. You want to avoid all that easy stuff. I'm sorry. You want to avoid the refined factory produced foods. You don't want to like run through the Wendy's uh, drive through McDonald's drive through You want to avoid saturated animal fat. So this is the kind of stuff that happens when you're in this mode of just being stressed and going from one thing to the next thing and you forget to eat. Um, or you're, you, you don't eat because you're getting these things done first, and then you're starving. And what's satiating? Chicken wings and you know fried chicken and all that other stuff that is full of fat and a lot of sodium as well. So those things you want to avoid. You want to sort of make sure that we're nourishing our bodies so that we can flourish and not kind of just satiate. Um, other things you want to avoid are refined sugar, refined grains. Caffeine, if you're, if you're feeling stressed, caffeine is not a good idea. A lot of B vitamins, which you'll find in those energy drinks, can be really good, but guess what? You'll get them from blueberries, you'll get them from fresh fruit and things like that. Um, so you might want to go with something like a blueberry tea um, or uh, that sweet tangerine ashwagandha tea is like the best. Um, you want to avoid alcohol. Like that thing that, that's the other thing. When you're under a lot of stress, I think when this whole thing started, my husband and I just we just wanted to have extra cocktails every night. And that's one the first the first day that we stopped doing that, I think we actually did feel a lot better. Um, but alcohol might be the one thing you want to go to to help relieve that stress, but it's really not gonna help. And sodium is the last thing we want to avoid. So let's just take a look at some quick snacks that you can make um, with some easy recipes that will help you feel better so that you don't get to the point that you feel like you have to go get a pizza and wings um, in five years. So let's take a look at, you know, we talked about salmon. Maybe for lunch you want to have a grilled salmon, or if you don't have time to cook, go to Tops, get the smoked salmon. It's like, it's a little bit of a splurge, it's like six bucks for a serving. But there's a smoked salmon there, you don't have to cook it all. You just throw it on top of green salad, maybe throw some berries and pumpkin seeds on there and a really great vinaigrette and call it, a, call it your lunch. Um, some really great snacks that might be pick-me-ups are like those Brookfield's dark chocolate covered blueberries or dark chocolate covered almonds, things like that. Just a really healthy, like even a full fat Greek yogurt or skier with berries in it is a great idea. Make your own overnight oats. Um, you can use yogurt if you want. You can use a soy milk, whatever. But just find something you like and find a way to make it nourishing. You can use some of the ingredients that we talked about today and find ways to de-stress with your nutrition. Thanks.